So today I just thought we'd take a quick look at these jam earbuds. They have quit working and I just don't know if this is getting to the point of being too small for us to work on. I have gotten better with micro soldering over the last few years, but this might be pushing it a little bit. The battery that's on this side of the earbuds still holds up pretty well. These are several years old. But the button has finally stopped working on this to turn on. And this is what kind of earbuds these are. If you look on Amazon, I guess they're not really available that much anymore. But this is one thing I found for them like on Amazon. To be so small, these earbuds have held up with the battery very well. You don't charge them very often. And it looks like the price is anywhere from $29 to $49 if you can still find them. But these may or may not be worth working on. But... Let's just take a look at it. I've already taken a razor knife and slid into this a little bit where it was already uh, cracked and broken on the rubber just to give me a peek inside. And we see the center button, which, which will be the power button on this one, does have some issues. It does not look right. Since the rubber was already broken on mine, I decided to cut it and look into it because they're almost throw away anyway, right? So, so I'm going to go ahead and get my spudger tool and see if I can pop this open. I was thinking that it might actually destroy the case. It's so tiny. I don't know how well they had glued it, but there goes the little charging port dust cover. I probably don't want to put it back on there anyway. But this is prying open surprisingly well. And there we go. Yeah, that had some glue, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. It kind of popped off. Probably just should have done that first, but I didn't know. I figured out about it. I had to have to destroy it to get into it, but now we know. Yeah, the center button here that you use to power it on or also use to pair it has lost the little mylar cover as well as some of the little silver uh, metal disc. So there's the little mylar cover. And I picked up the disc with another piece of mylar tape that I had. Because they're so tiny. I really, even with my fine needle point tweezers, I couldn't pick them up and keep them. So we'll get this under the microscope and we see here that the disc just go over that center switch. And with the tape capturing it, it's supposed to pop in and out and make contact from these two silver pads. Like this one. And this one. And these still work. But this one definitely had the most use and it looks like it had a little black tip under the mylar as well to help concentrate the push on the center and we'll take a quick look at the charging port here and as much use as it's had over the last four or five years it actually does look really really good so at this point I would say uh, maybe spend a little time see if we can get it back working because no corrosion on the board the solder pads for the charging port looks to be in very good condition and it definitely be a challenge i just so happen to have some of these little cheap switches not really meant for this exact purpose and meant to mount 90 degrees from this on the surface mount pad but pin to pin it's going to be close enough to probably work for us here and even though this switch is super tiny it looks huge on this board but i think it's worth a shot just to get it back working I had ordered these working on a buddy of mine's GPS dog collars, and I had to order like a pack of 10 of them, so that's why I had some of these. I'm going to put some flux on the pads here, and I'm going to try to remove it with just using my soldering iron with my curved tip. If it don't come off easy, I'll use some low melt solder from Northridge Fix, but with this being a plastic substrate in between, at least I believe it's plastic. It should melt and just crumble or move move on me as I heat up the pads. Oh yeah, that one's moving already. Oh yeah, I'm pushing against the black plastic to make sure it is melting. Yeah, this side's loose. Yeah, it probably just soldered back, but that's the good thing about low melt solder. It wouldn't cool off and attach back that quick, but this still ain't going to take but just a second here, it looks like. Get my tweezers in here, and once I get this plastic melted, I'll, I'll pull it up. And I think we're already clear on this left pad here. Plastic's moving easy, pliable. Readjust the camera here, and on the right side, yep, we're free. Pads look good. I'm just going to put some more flux on the pads. We'll put some more solder on those pads to help us 
get our pins attached. Excellent. I'm going to turn this up so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm just using my helping hands here so the board is moving. Sorry for the instability in the video because this is so tiny. Every little move seems amplified. But yeah, I think this is going to work. Let me hit this right side here and go ahead and secure it. And then let me see if I can get in here on the left side without moving my the little LED light guide. And I don't think that got it good enough. Let me Well, let me at least remove this tape. Still got the guide and the goo from the tape on it. Yeah, I think that's a lot better there. Yeah, I feel good about that one. I did let my soldering iron hit the top of the switch, though. I got to remove that solder. Does it work? Yep. Cut it back off. Awesome. Let's go ahead and remove that solder from the top of the switch there. There we go. Now one thing I thought interesting about this light guide is under it, it's two different LEDs. I could tell the way the red and the blue was shining that it looked like two different LEDs, but the board's so tiny it really surprised me that it wasn't just a tricolor LED they were using to say PCB layout space, but two on there. Put our little tape cover back on there and get the guide lined up. See if we can get this thing back together. I tried to be very gentle with the wires coming up. This got the speaker as well as the the battery wires coming in. Yeah, it goes, yep, like that. I'm just going to leave off the cover for the charging port. At this age, it really just don't need it. It wasn't uh, fitting that great anymore anyway. And I'm surprised this thing snapped back together a little. I'm going to cut the volume up here so you, you might be able to hear it come on. Sorry about the background noise. We'll drop it back down now. Cut it back off. Well, awesome. Well, that'll be a little backup set. And you know, saving it from the dumpster. Even though it's back together, I will, um, after I test it for an hour or so, I will come back and take some super glue and just put a few drops along the, the seam of it and put it back together. But I'm going to check it out first to make sure it does work well. And I'm probably going to put this rubber cover back on the best I can. I'm going to cut this little stud off that did go to the power switch because it's not needed any longer. It needs to be just more flat. And there we go, That's the center works. Now the upper and lower switch work. So mainly by gluing that back on, it saves us with the upper and lower switch still working as they should. So I'll come back and add super glue on that as well as the side, as mentioned earlier, to put the case back together after it's all tested and some of the tools that helped a lot with this repair is the little spudger tool the flux was the mvp of this repair the low melt solder could have been needed it helps tremendously in most applications if it doesn't want to come off easy we got lucky on this one because it was plastic the small tweezers are excellent as well as the small board holder but this board was just so small it didn't work on this one and i ended up using my helping hands but a lot of these tools are available from Northridge Fix. And I'll also have some links in the description for some of these tools as well. And by the way, I was using my Haco iron with this curved tip. It really helps get in some tight places for micro soldering at times. As long as you keep that tip good and clean, it'll get into some really fine areas for you. If you're interested in this little simple holder for the flux and grinding pin and low melt solder, several things that'll hold right. I'm going to do a video on putting this together as well, just to be a good storage solution for your flux grinding pin and low melt solder, as well as some other things, if you find it handy. I also sent one of these to Alex on Northridge Fix to see if he found it helpful. At this point, I don't know if he did or not, but just thought we'd offer it as much as he's helped us in learning more about micro soldering. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. 
I'll have links down in the video description of some of the tools and items I find helpful on my workbench. And any of those links you click on help support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.